A fast and frenetic triple header of races was played out in front of a record crowd in Hampshire, basked in glorious sunshine, and the thousands of fans were provided with high-class entertainment all weekend. Tom Ingram took his second pole position of the season and the second of his career, breaking the Thruxton lap record during qualifying for round seven of the 2016 Dunlop MSA British Touring Car Championship. Aidan Moffat made it an all-young gun front row with his best ever qualifying session, while elder statesman Matt Neal produced his own stellar lap with maximum success ballast to take third. Spectators packed the banks and filled the stands at Thruxton on Sunday morning, and the on-track action would prove even hotter than the summer sunshine. Race one began frenetically and would continue in the same fashion. The start initially looked to have favoured pole sitter Tom Ingram off the line, though a slipstreaming contest down to the first chicane left the Toyota alongside both Matt Neal and Aidan Moffat. Three into one simply wouldn't go, and when the dust settled, it was Neal's Honda leading Josh Cook's MG out front, while Moffat and Ingram were shuffled down the order following contact. Wicked Racing's Adam Morgan eyed his opportunity at the start of lap two, brushing past Ingram and Campbell, with the Toyota now nudged further down the pack. Moffat made his way past the pole sitter too, while the other MG6 of Ashley Sutton ended up in the tyres at Goodwood, trying to do the same. Neil initially pulled away out front, leading from Cook, Morgan, Moffat and Ingram at the end of the second tour, with positions changing at almost every corner. The pack, however, began to reel in the Honda man while he was trying to manage his pace, carrying maximum ballast. Morgan was right on it through Church on lap three and under the rear bumper of Cook's second-placed MG on the run to the chicane, where he was able to slip through, the Mercedes really on a mission as he hunted Neil up ahead. By the end of the next lap, he was up with the Honda. A good run out of club over the start-finish line saw him through into the lead, heading a gaggle of cars jostling for places in front of the stunned spectators. Moffat clawed his way past Neil too, seemingly completing his recovery and potentially giving Mercedes a first ever 1-2 in the BTCC. It wasn't to be, however, after he ran wide with a puncture on lap 10. By the time the leaders next blasted their way down to Brooklands and up Woodham Hill, Neil's Honda had too picked up a puncture. The triple champion attempted to pull into the pit lane but was collected by an unsighted cook which resulted in Gordon Shedden, Jeff Smith and Jake Hill, among others, being caught up in the incident. Officials were left with little choice but to cut the race short, and duly the Thruxton Marshals waved the red flags to signal the end of the showdown. Andrew Jordan then joined a list of seven different race winners from the opening eight BTCC races after the Pertec Racing driver produced an impressive run in the second bout of the day. Morgan made a steady getaway from pole position and the Wix Racing driver coped well with maximum success ballast in the first half of the race. Jordan had nipped by Ingram's Speedworks Toyota off the line and worse was to come for the latter when he was a judge to have jumped the start, incurring a drive-through penalty. Morgan led from Jordan and the WSR trio of Collard, Jack Goff and Sam Tordoff in close company. The BMW was coming alive in the battle for victory. At the start of lap three, Michael Epps was forced on the defensive, with Matt Jackson bettering him on the way into the complex. The RCIB insurance racing rookie wouldn't let up on the man much his senior in the BTCC, though, and took the spot right back by the time they began the blast around the back of the circuit. Just ahead, Jeff Smith span at high speed after putting a couple of wheels on the grass. The pivotal moment came on lap 11, as Jordan scythed his way past Morgan the former having played a waiting game, caring for his tyres with the Mercedes struggling to hang on despite a valiant effort at the head of the pack. Morgan was displaced down the order by Collard's team JCT 600 with Gardex BMW, but he fended off further attacks from the now trio of cars behind him. Incredibly, Holford's USA Racing's Gordon Shedden had hauled his Honda onto the lead quintet in the closing stages, having started from near the back of the grid. While Jordan was busy taking the lead, Shedden caught Goff and Tordoff napping to slip into fourth place. It was Jordan's first win since Croft 2014, and his first for the Motorbase outfit, a much-deserved and timely drive which he'll hope will kick-start his season. Motorbase performance then scored its second win of the day as Jackson followed Jordan's race two success with his own dynamic display in the Thruxton finale. The victory also marked Jackson's second of the 2016 campaign, 
as he joined Morgan as one of only two drivers to record double wins so far this season. Goodstone Racing's Dan Welch found himself in a popular P1 on the grid after the reverse draw, the first in the history of the championship for a Proton. Off the line, Jackson's Ford Focus blasted past the Proton of Welch, and despite being kept honest by the chasing pack throughout, he was able to cruise to the chequered flag in relative comfort. Welch went side by side with WSR's Sam Tordoff on the opening lap before the BMW slid wide at Seagrave and onto the grass while a trio of cars towards the back of the grid came together, spinning on the exit of the complex. Being cheered on by the crowd, underdog Welch then fended off several attacks from behind whilst closing in on leader Jackson, but the Goodstone racing driver would face disappointment on that five. He suffered a breakage and his car went off and hit the barrier. Team IHG Rewards Club's Jack Goff inherited second until Matt Neal's Honda got by on lap eight, and worse was to follow for the BMW driver. As the second Honda of Shedden attacked him for third, closing as the duo swept through Church, Goff locked up going into the final chicane, and the pair made contact. Shedden retired with damage after limping over the line, while Goff could only manage 18th place at the finish. The final podium place went to Morgan making it a hat-trick on the day as he crossed the line just 0.198 of a second ahead of the MG pair of Josh Cook and Ash Sutton. Rob Collard claimed sixth and with it the joint lead of the championship with Neil, while Rob Austin and the recovering Tordoff completed the top eight positions. The top ten included two young drivers who each enjoyed a special day's racing in the BTCC. Dan Lloyd took ninth and the Jack Sears Trophy to complete a fine debut with Eurotech Racing while 10th place Mike Epps took his best ever result and good points. At the close of play, Louise Goodman caught up with hat-trick king Adam Morgan as he looks forward to his home event at Alton Park. Well, Adam, any, any race weekend uh, when you're leaving home with a, with a win and two third places uh, under your belt is got to be a good one, hasn't it? Unbelievable. If uh, someone said you're going to come here and, and, and get three podiums in, on, a, on a race day is... Uh, I would to believe them, and uh, it's just been fantastic. So, uh, just massive thank you to everyone at uh, Wix Mercedes. They've been they've been amazing, and uh, and hopefully we can repeat it some later on uh, at Alton. Well, the tail's got to be uh, in the air going to Alton. Obviously, it's your home race, or so a race where you of all people would like to like to get some more good results. Yeah, it's my local track. Um, unfortunately, it's been the worst one I've had as in terms of results. But uh, you know, if uh, you know, I'd like to turn that around this time, and uh, you know, if. It proves anything in the championship. Consistency is key, uh, and the points that we've taken away from this weekend have been have been massive. And if we can replicate sort of three top tens at Alton, it will be fantastic, and just keep the championship uh, hunt going. Who are the drivers to look out for at Alton Park? Who are the guys who you think will run well there? Have got the the right car for that circuit? Uh, you know, the Hondas are going to be quick round there. Uh, I think the MGs will also be pretty quick. Uh, it also suits the rear-wheel drive guys as well. So you know, any t a pick of ten, you know, it could be anyone. But uh, you know, we've proven that our, our car works really well around here. Uh, I don't see any reason why it can't work at Alton, so we'll be having a go. It's a very popular race for, for the local fans, isn't it? What can they expect to see there? Just in, incredibly close racing. Uh, the track at Alton is incredibly tight and narrow. Uh, there's lots of opportunities for overtaking, and uh, it always brings a spectacle. You know, there's always a little rubbing, racing, and it's uh, just, just proper good fun. And a great atmosphere as well. Yeah, they, uh, you know, Alton Park for some reason seems to attract the biggest crowd. I think it's up to 40 odd thousand and more. So, just a great day out for everyone. What difference does that make to you as a driver having all of the fans there, having all of that support there? It's brilliant. You come out on the on the green flag lap and and the, on the lap to the grid, and you can just see just waves and waves of people. And uh, yeah, they're all there clapping and cheering. It's just it's just nice to be a part of it and be involved. See you there. See you there. Thank you very much.